Muhammad is depicted in hadiths as saying, I looked into paradise and I saw that the majority of its people were the poor. And I looked into hell and I saw that the majority of its people are women. Now, Muhammad was challenged about this. He was asked about it and he explained, I was shown hell and I've never seen anything more terrifying than it. And I saw that the majority of its people are women. And they said, why, O oh, Messenger of Allah? He said, because of their ingratitude. And the word he used was kufr, the same word that is often translated as unbelief. And it was said, are they ungrateful to Allah? He said, they are ungrateful to their companions, that is their husbands, and ungrateful for good treatment. If you are kind to one of them for a lifetime, then she sees one undesirable thing in you. She will say, I've never had anything good from you. And in another hadith, Muhammad is depicted, it says, the messenger of Allah went out to the musalla, the place of prayer, on the day of Eid al-Adha or Eid al-Fitr, that is, the two great feasts, the great festivals of the Islamic calendar. He passed by the women and said, O oh, women, give charity, for I have seen that you form the majority of the people of hell. And they asked, why is that, O messenger of Allah? He replied, you curse frequently and are ungrateful to your husbands. I have not seen anyone more deficient in intelligence and religious commitment than you. A cautious, sensible man could be led astray by some of you. The women asked, O messenger of Allah, what is deficient in our intelligence and religious commitment? He said, is not the testimony of two women equal to the testimony of one man? And they said, yes, because of course that's in the Quran. He said, this is the deficiency in her intelligence. Then he asked, is it not true that a woman can neither pray nor fast during her menses? And the woman said, yes. He said, this is the deficiency in her religious commitment. Now, of course, the absurdity of that is clear. He made up those laws and then he is judging women negatively on the basis of them. Women are essentially slaves of men in Islam. A hadith depicts Muhammad saying, if a husband calls his wife to his bed, that is to have sexual relations, and she refuses and causes him to sleep in anger, then the angels will curse her till morning. He also said, by him in whose hand lies my life, a woman cannot carry out the right of her Lord till she carries out the right of her husband. And if he asks her to surrender herself, that is for sexual relations, she should not refuse him even if she is on a camel's saddle. For its part, the Quran likens a woman to a field, tilth, to be used by a man as he wills. It says, your women are a tilth to you to cultivate, so go to your tilth as you will. It declares that a woman's testimony is worth half that of a man, saying, get two witnesses out of your own men, and if there are not two men, then a man and two women, such as you choose for witnesses, so that if one of them errs, the other can remind her. It allows men to marry up to four wives and have sexual relations with slave girls also, saying, if you fear that you shall not be able to deal justly with the orphans, marry women of your choice, two or three or four. But if you fear that you shall not be able to deal justly with them, then marry only one or take a captive that your right hands possess that will be more suitable to prevent you from doing injustice. The captives of the right hand are slave girls specifically for sexual purposes, as the Quran makes clear in several other passages. The Quran also rules that a son's inheritance should be twice the size of that of a daughter, saying, Allah directs you as regards your children's inheritance to the male, a portion equal to that of two females. Worst of all, the Quran tells husbands to beat their disobedient wives. It says, men are in charge of women because Allah has made the one of them to excel the other. That is, men are superior to women. And it goes on to say, because they spend of their property, so good women are obedient, guarding in secret that which Allah has guarded. As for those from whom you fear disobedience, admonish them, banish them to separate beds, and beat them. The Quran also allows for marriage to prepubescent girls, stipulating that Islamic divorce procedures shall apply to those who have not yet menstruated. Clearly, women are second class in Islam, chattels of the men who control them. For more information about this, see this website.